Hello all, I am your TA Balaji. Today I will be discussing the solutions for week 1 assignment 1. We will start off with question 1. What are the values of registers AX and BX after the following assembly code executes? So uh, let's go over this assembly code one at a time. So move AX comma 2 will you know put 2 onto the register AX. Move BX comma 1 will put 1 onto the register BX. So sub AX comma BX. You know, this, this operation right this operation that you see over here that is going to uh, you know, perform AX is equal to AX minus BX and BX will remain as BX. That is 2 minus 1 is equal to 1 and bx is equal to 1. So now and uh, so to get a more you know intuitive understanding of how all of this works you could I would recommend you know uh, interested students to try out the software called visual studio code. So you can install this software visual studio code and you can add you know an add-on in the installer called add-ons for C programming. So you can, you know, follow any online tutorial to install uh, this Visual Studio code. And you could, you know, try to install Visual Studio code uh, to try out these experiments in uh, uh, the C code and also view its assembly, uh, you know, uh, understand how it happens in assembly level. Uh, there is also an option called, you know, uh, view this assembly in Windows. So in, in Windows, you go to, you know, Windows, this assembly, view this assembly, this assembly, you will be able to see the assembly equivalent code for, you know, each of the C statements that you write. This is an, in addition to the, you know, prescribed Godbolt website. So in addition to Godbolt, if you want to, you know, understand how the C code executes line by line, you know, you, this Visual Studio code is a, you know, a higher end software for it. So I will be, you know, working out the solutions also using Visual Studio and I will tell you uh, what the answer has come out to be. So if you look at the code as, as displayed over here, this code, this is the code that I used for question one. And I, I have performed the same operations and I have printed out what, you know, I have moved into A. I mean, this is the question. Right. This is the question, and I've uh, printed out what EX and B, uh, EBX are are after the code executes using these print statements. Right. So you can also see from the output of Visual Studio that you've got what we expect from theory. Yes. So that is question number one. Moving on to question number two. What is the value of the zero flag at the end of this program's execution? So let's work it out again. Bx is now made as 10. Xor ax meaning xor will become 0. Add ax comma bx will be ax plus bx. You know, and bx remains as bx. Right? So this is nothing but uh, 0 plus 10. So ax will become 10 now. Now increment bx. Increment bx meaning bx will become 10 plus 1. As 11 increment ax ax will become 10 plus 1 11 now mul bx so this mul will have you know it will do um, uh, a uh, and the mul operation what will happen ax and not ax is equal to uh, ax in two no bx will happen that is 11 into 11 that is you know 121 and it will be stored in ax and you know dx but uh, since 121 is a short enough value to be stored in ax itself you can it will be stored as 121 in ax and now when you compare this value of ax with you know your the next statement that is executed is move bx and 121 now when you compare ax and bx both are the same both are storing 121 for which you know the zero flag at the end of the execution since the comparison is same will be set to one so let's you know verify 
the uh, theoretical understanding also using visual studio okay so you can you know, look at the code that i have displayed over here here you performed exactly what is there in the question and here we have you know uh, devised a logic to test what is the zero flag so here is a logic to test if zero flag was one or a zero so if you go through this logic you will find out that now we can come we can uh, obtain the value of the zero flag registered using a bunch of jz and jnz and finally you know the zero flag is you now displayed and printed out as shown over here the zero flag is indeed one which is what we had assumed i mean uh, is what we have derived from calculations right okay. moving on to the next question let me just move this entire working side by side like this space the next question yeah. okay, that is question two now question three now ecx is equal to two now clear direction flag which is setting the direction flag to zero rep move sp so uh, repeat you know move sp and uh, and then move al comma one so uh, how does move sb work first of all so let's look at you know the pseudo code that defines how you know, move sb works so move sb works like this while ecx register is greater than zero that is if ecx register is one or uh, two or so on you know ecx ecx is decremented and when depending on the direction flag if the direction flag is uh, zero uh, then the uh, the uh, so in increment if the direction flag is zero or decrement you know so the direction flag sets whether you know you go as edi plus 1 or edi minus 1 similarly esi plus 1 or minus 1 right so based on this logic and then finally you know uh, the value given by ees extra segment pointed by edi is now fed in the value ees pointed by esi which is the you know direct, uh, destination index and the, the source index in the destination index so the value from here will be copied and put over here so this is what will happen when rep move sp executes so from this you know what are we uh, when move al comma 0 1 is reached it is necessary the uh, is necessary the case that cl is equal to 0 so for this we are trying to see you know when uh, at this point what is the value of uh, uh, cl right so if you if you see cl is nothing but you know the lower and the higher upper half of the uh, ecx register a cx register right so, cl and ch together on the x right so now let's look at what is there in cl so since the value is 2 for the following instruction and uh, move sp is happening until you know ecx goes all the way you now as soon as ecx becomes a zero you now this decrementing does not uh, as soon as ecx becomes zero this decrementing does not happen right so so if if you uh, have such a case ecx will become you know ecx minus one which is one once then it will trickle down to zero but it will not enter the loop so ecx equal to zero which is the lower value of you know cl will be zero since the entire C ecx itself this has become you know zero so this is exactly what we will also you know get from our question you know are working uh, in the in the assembly uh, you know the Visual Studio. So you have move ECX comma zero to CLD and rep move SP. And finally, we are trying to get what the value of CL is, and we are printing out the value of CL. Right? So this is said to be zero. Moving on. So question number four. Say the following seven bytes are stored in the extra segment as shown. So here we are seeing that you know 81, uh, 74, 47, so on is there. 
with the address of the last element 81 being stored at start address and the address increments as you go up from the list so the address is increment as you go up in the list right consider the following program to search for 47 so let's say you want to you know search for 47 al comma 47 so uh, this is the thing that you want to search but you are at 81 so now you know you've moved ecx ecx you have moved with ecx has become seven so now you decrement ecx and it becomes you know first time you decrement ecx you know, seven becomes six and you're search, checking if 74 is equal to 47 it is not second time you decrement ecx it is five and checking if it is uh, equal it is now do you think you know ec whether the ecx will stop or not that depends on whether it will go to four or five so that that depends on you know, the pseudo code here and also basically how it works right so here the operation of repni scasp is such that while ecx is greater than zero every time you know as soon as it comes uh, inside this loop ecx will be decremented once so given that you know five is greater than zero right so we would have in our question right uh, sorry four, five is greater than zero it will move from it will be decremented to four irrespective of whether we have reached the condition or not, then only the, the checking happens here. So if and else, right? So this is for, you know, uh, the value that you are checking for in the uh, uh, EDA, right? So if, when the condition happens, the zero flag is set and you break out of the loop. But, you know, as soon as ECX is greater than zero, it comes inside the loop, which is ECX is equal to ECX minus one, which is the reason, you know, five is not the answer and four is the answer. So it's a little you know, tricky, but you know, that is how the operation works uh, to, you know, confirm what I have stated here. Uh, and the answer of ECX is indeed four. We will look at the, uh, you know, C implementation using uh, the assembly implementation on Visual Studio, right? So on Visual Studio, we know that the value of AL, uh, so we want to, you know, check for e EDI plus two. So this is EDI and EDI plus two. That is how we have done. So since we cannot, you know, store 81 and 47, we have just, you know, assumed that we are checking for EDI plus two in this, uh, uh, in this location. So AL is having the value of EDI plus two, right? And now, ECX is having seven just as given and clear direction flag, that's me, rep me cast. Now, after this happens, we are trying to find out what is, you know, now a, AL, which is you no know, EDI plus two is compared with, with, you know, AL. So EDI plus one won't work, EDI plus two will work, but then, you know, the value, since we have this logic here, the final answer of ECX is printed out to be four due to the logic that I stated because it always comes inside the while loop and decrements once and then only you know, has the check condition, right? So, therefore, the answer for this question is four. Question number five. Say the opcode of Rebni's CASP uh, is one byte and at present EIP is equal to zero X F21. The instruction Repni, you know, uh, and ECX is equal to zero. The instruction Repni, Rep Mo SP is executed. After execution, we observe CX is equal to zero. Now, what is EIP? So now here, uh, since we've, you know, since the data given here is that the Rep Mo SP has uh, opcode size of one byte, they, they, therefore the instruction will now go on to the next uh, re, next uh, instruction pointer, which is EIP is equal to EIP plus one which is 0x, 0f, 2, 1 to 0x, 0f, 2, 2. Therefore, you know, you have this as the answer. So, you know, you can confirm uh, all of this by, you know, trying to look at uh, the instruction pointer, also using Visual Studio. And if you assume that, uh, you know, opcode here, we've given as one byte, so the next instruction is 0x, 0f, 2, 2. Therefore, that is the answer for question number five. Moving on to question number six, Note ECS is equal to 0x, so on, all of this data. Assume that, that there are two arrays as shown. This is data array 1, you know, data array 2. After the following code snippet exec executes, what will be the value in array 1 and 2? 
so again let's you know uh, work it out one at a time you know clear direction flag will give you zf is equal to zero and you know esi is set to 0x100 which is you know this because you calculate it as you know stack segment mm. uh, yeah so you have to calculate this locations as as you know yeah so okay. esi is given as 0x100 e E i is given as 0x200, right? And E d is, okay, uh, the data segment is 0x1600. So 0x1600 into 10 plus E s i is the total physical address, which is, zero, uh, the, which is you know, uh, given by 16100. So this is the start and this is the second array start. Okay, so now you know you have the source and destination, and you have ECX given as two, and rep move is B. So it will happen, you know, uh, such that the this is the you know the destination is given as this. So 11 will go sit here, 14 will go sit here, so two will become one, one will become zero, and then uh, you don't have you know. Finally, the answer will be uh, this thing. Right? So basically, it depends on what we have given as the two arrays over here. The destination has given that, you know, this, let's, uh, I've given a different array in my test. So here you have source 34, means 34 and 29. You know, that is, you know, copied onto the destination, which is 62 and, you know, one is replaced and the original two were there. That is our expectation, even in this thing, which is basically to have replaced only this by 11, you know, 11, 14, and this to be 0, 0, 0, 0. So the answer is this, right? So that is question number seven. Question number six. So you can, you know, view this code, just, uh, you can glance this code just to see, you know, how I have implemented this on the Visual Studio. Right? Bit past here for a minute and observe it and get an understanding of how it's done. Okay, moving on to question number seven. The value stored in the register EAX comma EDX after the execution of the following code. So EAX is equal to six and EDX is equal to two and mul EDX gives you e on on top of EAX being the MSP and EDX being the MSP. You have you know six into two, you know, twelve as the answer, and twelve is the answer. Right? That is a simple evaluation six, you know, six, two, and the answer being you know twelve and zero. Right? Question number eight. So in this question, there is you know a little bit of a confusion. So we will be deciding to remove this question from evaluation. The reason being. Uh, the value, you know, the value of the stack segment uh, 0x f612 will remain as 0x f612 if this was given as the word pointer. Uh, but if it was a word pointer, it will not be. You know, if you go through this code and execute it before and after, you uh, you will also find it out from the execution of this code uh, in Visual Studio that the answer for this question will not be as, as stated so we will be removing this from evaluation however no this is how you would try to uh, look at the value of esp before and after and make sure that you know the value the difference here is four you know, four bytes whereas we as you, we have assumed that they will be zero but had you you know written the code with a d word pointer uh, you would have got the right answer so we will be removing this from evaluation not consider it for evaluations will be marked as zero marks okay question number eight the question number nine if ecs is equal to so much eds and so and so on the address uh, access by the instructions is so this is again you know a manipulation of you know eax and zero x this thing so you just have to perform hexadecimal addition of zero x you know zero one one six plus zero x uh, 0, 0, 2, 6, which is the answer as given over here, right? The address accessed by, so this is the address that you're trying to access, 
you know uh, uh, so the sorry so that is not only that you should also you know add it with the uh, respective you know uh, segment address so given that vx is you know uh, falling in the data so you need to you know do 0x no, 1634 into 10 which is eds into 10 plus this value so if you compute this this plus this whole value that you compute, you will result in this, which can be, you know, seen using the hexadecimal calculator, where, you know, you add uh, so in a hexadecimal calculator online, you could, you know, say, one six three four zero plus you know you can say first one one six get the result which is you know in hex one six four five six which is zero uh, x one six is one six zero x four five six then one six four One six four five six plus you know two six. Yes, you know, this plus zero x one six four five six plus zero x zero zero two six is equal to zero x one six four seven c, which is given by this. And that is how you would calculate it. The EDS depending on the uh, you know, since EAX belongs to data segment, right? So e, 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 EDS into 10 plus EAX plus 0x 0026 would be the answer. So question number 10 to 12. Answer the following questions based on the following, right? Again, direction flag, you know, is 6 to 1, AL is 14, ECX is 9, EDI is given with a value, and rep is CASP, right? So you're again, you know, starting from 14 and you know, you know you're trying to find uh, 216 to you're trying to find 14 again it is not just uh, 9 goes to 8 goes to 7 goes to 6 it's it, 7 it finds it but 6 is the final answer right so this can be confirmed you know using the using your yeah, so this can be con confirmed using a code which I have not displayed here, but yeah, it is uh, exactly the earlier logic. The value stored in the register EDA after the above code snippet ex executes, right? So again, you know, two one six becomes uh, two one six becomes two one five mm, becomes two one four becomes zero x two one three, all because of this you know, statement of uh, what happens as soon as you know while is greater than zero you know it always increments or decrements and then only you know checks for the condition therefore it always happens that way right so two one three what is the value of the direction flag since we have set it as this thing it is you know already we've already set the direction flag in the beginning it's like one okay? that's what the direction flag is for yeah so you know you could check the direction flag even after the code executes. So you, you uh, I have just printed out, you know, the final, uh, you can also check for the, uh, you know, the flag register, which can be, for example, registers, okay, before and after, you know, you can also print this out as a screen and, you know, check the registers before and after and the register called the EFL, which is the flag register. And the way you would interpret the EFL, the flag register is shown over here. Right, so this is how you interpret it, and you know the tenth bit with the zero numbering is DF as shown here, which is one after the execution. So therefore, direction flag is one. So in this way, you know you can use Godbolt and you know Visual Studio to understand these uh, these questions in greater detail. If you have any other questions, please you know uh, get in touch with me. Thanks a lot.